Hey everyone, Squiddy here. This is gonna be a video about my full reload setup. We're gonna cover everything from my tackle pod, my rods, my rear well, everything in between. So stay tuned to see how I set up everything. So the first thing we're gonna look at is safety and the number one thing you need is your life jacket. Now the one I have here is a Hutch Wilco Pro Fish jacket. So this life jacket is built for kayak fishing. It's gonna keep me upright in the water. If I ever go overboard, I'm gonna be sweet as. So it has a bunch of pockets for gear, for radios, etc. And I'll just run you through a few of the things that I've got in here. So first up, the radio. It's a Cobra Marine radio. I communicate with shore with this between boats and also it's a lifeline to the Coast Guard. So very important to have. Uh, tethered, as you can see, won't be going anywhere if I drop it very important thing to have on board next thing is your plb now this thing is the most important thing right after the life jacket on board i do head out to sea quite far up to 10 kilometers out sometimes so it is essential if you're going offshore really far out to have one of these so this one is an ocean signal. All I need to do if I'm in trouble, I'll pull out this aerial, stick it up, and then bang button. It'll go straight to the emergency services to tell them I'm in trouble and I'm here. That's a huge thing, peace of mind for when I'm out really far to sea. So that'll protect me from weather and any other event that may happen. So the next thing on the life jacket is this phone pouch. Now I have a big iPhone 12 and it fits snugly in there. It could probably go even bigger iPhone, but it's always important to have that in your life jacket, uh, especially if you go overboard. The phone I have here is in a waterproof case. It's a life proof, so uh, it will withstand any water getting in it. But the main thing to remember is if you're overboard or if you've got wet hands like I do now, the touch screen doesn't work, so you have to really rely on your marine radio to have any communication. So just keep that in mind. If you have a touch screen, it's gonna to be tough to actually contact anyone. So I'll use this for a bit of filming and also to communicate back on land if I'm not using my radio. Now we're just gonna go over the final bit of safety stuff that I have, and it's in this pod back here. So first thing up is my first aid kit. Now I've got this in a little pottle and I've just got the bare essentials for taping myself up if I cut myself, etc. It's just a backup in case I need to do something uh, urgently. It's good to have on board and I, I wouldn't go without it. Now the next thing, I always take a flare in my pod over here. This is just going to be an easy way for the emergency services to see me if it's rough or if I need to signal a boat down, this is a really good way to do it. So I have that in the pod. I'm hoping I never have to use it, but it's there just in case. Now the final thing I have in here is a roll of tape. Now this could save me from a bunch of different mishaps. It could be a paddle break. It could be I need to tape my hand up. I've actually used this before for taping my hand up from a knife cut. So. It's just there to safeguard against anything like that. Okay, so the next thing up is the tackle pod. So this is my center tackle pod here. Uh, it provides all my storage for my fishing gear and camera gear. And the first thing up we're gonna look at is the sounder. So I've got a Raymarine Element HV. It's the seven inch model, just close enough for me to reach with my hand from my seated position. I don't need to touch buttons too often, so it's not too big of a deal that it's that far forward. Now I've got that connected to my Hypervision transducer, which is underneath here. Uh, the reload tackle pod has a very long 30 centimeter well under there, so I can have a really big transducer like the one I have on this one. And connecting to that sounder, we'll just jump into my messy pod, and hopefully I won't mess with any of the battery, but, um, I'll just give you a quick look here before I put it back in. 
I'm running an FPV power 12 volt 17.5 amp hour battery. Now this is going to run it for around 8 to 9 hours from what I've found. This is a great option for something really lightweight and rechargeable and it does heaps and heaps of cycles. So it's lasted a good few years and it's probably got a few more in its lifetime before I go to the next battery. So that's what I use for battery, that's the sounder. Let's just take a bit more of a look inside and outside of this pod. On the pod, I've got my knife. It's a black magic knife and I've got the holder for the knife screwed into here on the top of the pod. Now, that's just what I use for all my fish ickying and cutting baits, etc. Just anything that needs to be cut. So the next thing you might notice on my pod compared to a normal one is this massive wood piece that we've put in. They come standard with a smaller piece of wood and what I found was I needed more deck space for cutting bait etc. So we've installed this custom piece of wood on the top and it extends right to the front where the soft bait holder is. So yeah it, it works really good. We've sealed it around the outside with some sealant so it doesn't get water underneath it because we were noticing that water was going underneath and it was getting really gunky with bait and crap so now that we've sealed it I'm not getting water underneath this and also it's not getting into my pod so that's really solved that problem okay so we're gonna just move up the front real quick where you're seeing me from the front is my Railblazer Boom 600 now that's got a GoPro mount on the top as you can see there my front GoPro is filming the GoPro is leashed to the kayak and this can swivel around anywhere I want it so that will go all the way around there and it can go all the way around the other side. So that's how I take all my photos of my fish, all my video facing backwards towards my rods. And also I can swap this pole over into this one at the back and film from that back angle. Okay, so we're gonna look inside my pod now. It's a little bit messy because I've been fishing for the last couple hours. But first things first, I'm gonna look at camera batteries. Now, you probably don't know how I do my camera batteries while I'm out on the water. It's all just kind of seamless as I edit the videos, but I have a power bank in here along with six GoPro batteries. So I'm powering two Hero 9s and I really need all the power I can get when I'm filming with two cameras at the same time for sometimes up to 10 hours on the really long days. So I have this power bank here and that plugs into a GoPro battery charging pack. But yeah, I'll plug that in and pop the batteries onto charge as soon as they come out of my camera. So I always try and keep my cameras at least 30 to 40% in case I hook something really big and I need to have at least 20 to 30 minutes of battery time. In there, I also have my Sony underwater camera battery. So that's pretty important for doing a swap over when that one runs out. And speaking of the underwater camera, we'll just pull it out so you can have a quick look at it. I will be doing a setup video of this also in the near future, so uh, stay tuned for that whenever I manage to get that done. I have that on this bracket. It's in a Sony mount. It can go down to about 60 meters. So I'll leave that in there. We'll, we'll go over that another time, just the specifics of everything. That's in there, that goes up the front. Next up is my lure box. Now I've got all sorts of goodies in there and I'll probably go over this another time just all the specific stuff that I have in there. Underneath that is my ledger box so that has all my ledger rigs, a couple of live bait rigs and anything else I might need to use out here. So we'll just reorganize a few things, pull out a couple of other things to show you and Okay, right, let's chuck that back in and I will go over to the next thing. Next thing up is microfiber towels. Now, because I'm filming out here so much, uh, I get stuff on the lens all the time and there's nothing worse to me than a dirty lens. So I'm constantly wiping these cameras with my microfiber towels and it makes a huge difference to the quality of the footage I get. So those are in there. I have about four or five of them in there in case I get a few of them wet. We'll go to a couple of the tools. First thing, Black Magic D hooker. This thing is invaluable for unhooking toothy fish, barracuda, uh, spiny dogfish is a really good one for those. Uh, anything else that has the hook in and it's, I'm struggling to get it out by hand, I'm going to use this. I'm going to flick the head and they're just going to drop off every time. So, invaluable piece of kit that. Really, really good. Designed extremely well. 
you basically have a trigger grip and then away you go and perfect. Another tool is my black magic scissors. So these are little serrated scissors, can cut braid really, really easily compared to other things. And also I use them to cut baits, etc. So we'll move on. Another thing I have in my pod are fish bites. Now I've been using them today. I've already caught a few blue cod. These are a game changer for bait fishing. So ever since I started using these, I've been using natural baits less and less. And I've just been tipping my rigs with these and the amount of fish I catch on these is extremely comparable to bait fishing with half the mess. And you don't need to use much on your hook and I often don't. I only use a thumbnail sized piece and I've caught so many different fish on them. So we'll just put those back into the pot up the front so they're out of the way. And we'll grab one of the other things that I need to talk about. So my leader. I have two spools with me today. So it'll depend on what I'm doing for what I take. But I have a 100 pound spool for my jig rod. And I usually take anywhere from 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon for my other slow jig rods. So that's what I mostly use when I'm jigging even out deep in 80 meters or in here in 30. So our final few things in our pod are our sunscreen bottle. That works really good for about four to five reapplies throughout the day. I don't need a big one, just nice and compact to keep in there. All right, next one is my measurer. Now, I most often use this for smaller fish, but I do have it all the way up to 75 centimeters. Uh, thankfully, the reload is actually 75 centimeters wide, so you have a pretty good idea if the kingfish is legal based on if you have it on your lap. So I use that, I'll flatten it down onto my footwell and I get a really good gauge of if that fish is legal. Usually if you have to measure it, it's going back anyway, but it's there just to make sure. So next thing up is our food. So I don't really like to eat too much while I'm out on the water, but I'll take muesli bars with me just so I can top up if I need it for my muscles. I'm not sure about everyone else, but I don't really eat too much on the water. So I mostly try and drink water every now and then, and then I'll feed up when I get back. That's my whole pod system. I don't think I've missed anything, so that's that. We're just gonna look at the rear well here. So I'll turn around. We're gonna get two angles of it. First thing is my black magic net. So this is the short handle net. I have got so many different fish in it from kingfish to snapper up to 85 centimeters, tuna, everything. So this thing works really well. It's a rubber coated net, does an excellent job for a huge range of fish and I would not be here without it. Now I have it on a very, very long leash so I can reach all the way around the kayak and it's attached at the back of my seat here so it can go either side. So the next thing is my drift chute. Now, I'll just hold you out here and I'll show you how big it is. There's the full drift chute. I have that attached to my running rig. This is what slows me down when it's really strong wind. When I'm drift fishing, I need to fish at under one kilometer an hour. So this is invaluable for slowing me down to that speed so I can keep my jigs upright. So we'll chuck that back there for the moment. We'll just put it on top and we'll pull out the anchor. Right out. So I have my anchor here. I've got really thin rope, so it's nice and easy to pull up and down. It doesn't have extra weight. I have a boy here for when I anchor that goes behind the boat. And now for the reload, I use a 1.5 kilo grapnel and about just under a meter of chain. So that works for me. Uh, everyone else will have their ideas on how to anchor, but also on my anchor, I have a breakaway now. That's just a light zip tie that goes there and I make sure that all the weight goes onto the zip tie and not onto the main part of the anchor. So I'll be able to break that if it gets caught up in the reef. When I break it, the anchor turns around and then it pulls out backwards and it saved me a lot of anchors, honestly. Okay, so next thing is our fish bag. So it'll be easy to show you when I get back in, but for the moment, I'll just give you a quick look. I'll move a rod out of the way so you can see. In here is all the fish that I've caught today. I'll pull out a blue cod for you maybe. Here we go. So fish go in here. 
and the way I actually chill them down is these. I use hot water bottles. So I put water in them and they go in the freezer and it works very good. It has a higher surface area than other kinds of bottles that you might use. So that's how I do it. Works good for me. So inside the fish bag I'll also have my burley or my burley pot if I'm going to use that. So the final thing out the back is the flag. So I will just have a quick look at it for you. But my flag at the back, that's for visibility. I need to signal that I'm low to the water and I'm here so boats can see me and that thing sticks up like a sore thumb. That railblazer flag back there does a perfect job. We'll move on to the deck now. First thing is the Viking rod holders. They come standard with every reload. These front ones are great for putting rods in after catching fish and also having them in there just while fishing in general. They have a nice angle out to each side so your rods can sit at them nice and easily. I just like to back the drag down on my rods when I fish out of them so I don't point load anything. Those are the front ones. We're just going to turn around. I'll put my paddle down so you can have a look. But our back ones house all of our rods. So we have all four rods at the back and our two railblazer holders as well. So this here is my rod holder and that's done by railblazer. We'll set a rod in there if I'm bait fishing. So the other railblazer I leave clear for my camera when I want to film down the back. Up the front you may see is my spear paddle. Now, this is an extremely important thing for safety. Again, I have a carbon paddle and they can shatter. So I'm gonna be prepared for that situation if it comes, I hope it doesn't. That front paddle, it's aluminium. It's gonna save my ass if I do break this one. It's always up the front, no matter where I go, offshore, inshore, anything. That's always there and that is invaluable. Just next to the paddle up the front over here is my rod tubes. Now that is what I use for my landings and if you saw the surf I went through this morning whilst it's huge but coming in it's going to be a bit of an issue so all my rods go in there and I will film this before I go in and then they're tied down so in here we're going to grab out my tie down. So that's just a piece of elastic with a section here that'll tighten it up. Just tighten it up and go bang and that'll be nice and tight around the rods. So I attach them over here with the handle and they all sit down the right hand side. So next thing, I'll pull this out so you can have a look. This is what I sit on. It's just a piece of EVA foam, just floor mat basically. That goes under my bum to keep me out of the water. That works pretty good. I don't really get a sore bum so that works well for me. Final thing on the deck is probably my drink bottle. I have this obviously for hydration. Sometimes I'll, I'll take water, sometimes I'll take Powerade. Depends on how long of a day I'm planning on doing, what sort of Ks I'm doing. We'll look at the paddle now. Okay, so we'll just bring you a bit wider so you can see. So when I upgraded from my Profish 400 to the Reload, I really wanted to get the top end stuff. So one of those things was a carbon paddle. So when Viking brought out the Carbon F-Lite paddles, they're really well priced, around $500. And that was just in my price range to upgrade. And man, has it been good this season for me. So I save so much energy just by having a lighter paddle. You can hold it with two fingers. It's that light. I went for the straight shaft because I've always paddled a straight paddle. You can also get a bent shaft, but this has just been perfect for me. I absolutely love paddling with this thing and I can never go back to an aluminium paddle because it's just so light. It's barely a kilo. It's just great. I've loved every second of it. Really premium build. And again, that's leash too. So we'll just move forward a little bit and we'll turn around and we'll have a look at this. Pull you out so you can have a look. But this back here is my Hurricane backrest. Now this is a pretty premium piece of kit for the boat. This is really really good for my lower and upper back support. I'm often out for 10 hours sometimes so super important to have a good seat. It's just a really nice soft seat for the top of my back. I love having it. It's just I can sit right back in it. I'm comfortable all day. So the next thing I'm going to go over, I'll just send you to the front, is my running rig. At the moment I've got it hooked up to my drift chute but this thing here, I've custom done the rope. 
and that's six mil rope. Back slides along, I'll just pop this off so you can uh, have a look. I've got a shark clip that is heat shrunk onto the end there. Both my anchor and my drift chute go on there for a range of applications. I usually slide it all the way to the back to keep the nose downwind. Next thing's next. We're gonna look at my rod. So I always get requests about this, so I'll be able to direct you here now. So first up is my kingfish rod. Now, the reel, I've got a Torium 16 PG. Lovely big handle grip. Love having that for jigging. Uh, rod, I have a backbone five foot five, 15 to 24 kilo rod. Now it's pretty light for kingfish, but off the kayak, it's a really good compromise for the lightweight. Uh, also use this for dropping my camera as it's got such a stiff top section. On my reel I run 50 pound Black Magic Rainbow Braid Elite and I normally run anywhere from 100 pound Tough Trace to 130 if I'm really expecting to hook a big one. The Torium has done great for me over the years. This is the same one I bought all the way back in I think it was 2018 so six years. Yep that's bloody good. Now recent one, I haven't had this one too long is my pen fathom now this one's the fathom 2 series and it is the 8xn size this one has been a great upgrade for me for slow jigging it's on an allegiant six foot six rod has a really strong butt but it has a really nice tip that's nice and sensitive which i really like on here i have a heap of line and these eights can really pack on a lot of braid so the 20 pound Black Magic Inferno braid actually fits 500 meters on here, so I can have a huge amount of line on a really small reel. So I love having that. I can use that in very deep water. I can use that for tuna, anything. If I hook something really big, I actually have a chance to stop it with that amount of line. Great reel overall, super smooth. Rod's awesome. Caught a lot of good fish on it. Okay, our next one is my soft bait rod. So this is a Black Magic set. It's the Gladius saltwater rod. So that's 2.2 meters. I've had this thing for years. It keeps performing. It's caught so many fish now. Albacore tuna, kingfish, snapper, gurnard, everything in between. Uh, I've got 15 pound hyperglide on there and it packs on nearly 300 meters to this reel. Hyperglide is so thin that you can pack a lot of it on. So I love having that capacity on a soft bait reel, just in case you might hook a massive kingfish. That's just peace of mind, really. And the leader I run on that is typically anywhere from 15 to 30 pound. Usually the 20 pound is what I like to go for, for general use. My final rod is my Gimpu 200 PG. Now that's on a blackout rod. This is my favorite set just overall. It's so light, but it's also super powerful. So the rod, is six foot six just like the other one but it's got a really really light tip section just look at how thin of a noodle that is just tiny this section here has a huge amount of power so i've caught everything from tuna kingfish up to 15 kilos snapper up to nine kilos it's just delta so many good fish if you're patient you can just beat them on this gear and that's what this gear does best so I use it all the way out in 80 to 90 meters, right in shore, everything in between. It does great with the Sinakus on it. That's what I've been fishing with today on it. A couple of blue cods so far. So that's that one. Uh, I love using it. The reel's super smooth. The leader I use, probably 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon. And it packs on about 250 meters of 20 pound Rainbow Braid Elite from Black Magic. So that's an awesome setup. I love using it. It's great. So one thing to note, on every single rod, I got a rod leash. Now, if I happen to roll this kayak over, touch wood I never do, these are all gonna be safe. If I roll it over, rods are gonna be fine. That's the main thing. Even if the reels go underwater, oh well, we've still got them. So that's everything there with the rods. We're gonna move on to the next thing. So the next thing is my clothing. So you probably often wonder what I wear while I'm out on the water, and it does change season to season so it's winter right now and i'm wearing the most warm possible stuff so ideally you're going to have your dry pants on now these are razdex pants they're excellent for keeping you dry downstairs my boots they keep my feet warm throughout the whole year i always wear them year round uh, those are aeropec dive boots 
So those are perfect for keeping your feet warm and also just protecting them from spines, etc. Upstairs, I've got about four layers on today. Underneath all the gear, I have a waterproof layer. So it's not completely waterproof, but I have thermals that quick dry and also keep my body warm if I'm gonna be in the water. Now ideally, instead of wearing just layers of clothing, you would have a waterproof layer on top and bottom. I don't have a paddle jacket, so I just make do with what I have. It is really important in the winter to make sure that your layers underneath are somewhat waterproof and also can provide heat to your body if you're in the water. Our water temperature is 15 degrees today, so you wouldn't last that long in 15 degrees. It's pretty cold for your body. I've got Oshia Shimano gloves. Gloves, honestly, I don't find to last that long. They probably do maybe six months of really hard out use. These ones have got holes all through them, but they're really good for when I'm paddling long distance just to keep my hands from really getting smashed too much. Sunnies and my net gator. So sun protection is pretty important to me. It's really easy to just have your gator up instead of having to put sunscreen on constantly. And my sunnies, they're Shimano. I just have some cheapies for some polarizing on the water. You can see down into the water much easier with those on. Keeps the sun out of your eyes and everything. So that's everything on clothing. We're gonna move on to the next thing. Okay, so the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the camera setup that I use. You're probably noticing that I'm cutting back and forth between two cameras. Now I will just go over to my iPhone and I will just show you here. So this one here at the front is a GoPro Hero 9. It's attached to my Railblazer 600. It's got a little clip here that clips onto the back of the GoPro. I have that crimped on so that it can always be leashed. That's just a little bit of two mil cord that goes down and attaches to the boat. So that's the front one. This is my hat that I use, the old black magic one. Okay, so front one is another GoPro Hero 9. And I have this sewn into the front of the hat. First things first is you drill a few holes into the hat and then you can just sew that straight in there. You can attach these in a range of ways, but that's just the way I've done it. Uh, this one has another crimped wire piece at the back that attaches directly to the hat. I've sewn the other end in with a piece of wire. It cannot go anywhere. Even if this fails at the front, that's going to be sweet. Now, you might be wondering, oh, what if the hat goes? I've got that sorted too. So at the back, I've got this wire that comes out of the back of the hat, and that goes to another piece of cord which attaches to me. So the camera's gonna go nowhere if I go overboard or if the hat falls off, which is something that can happen at times. All the photos come from that front camera there. I use that, I'll, ju I'll just stop the recording for a second. GoPro stop recording. So that's the main way that I actually turn my cameras on and off. GoPro turn on, see if it works. There it goes. Okay, so I'll take a photo now. GoPro take a photo. Here's your fish. Okay, so that's how I take my photos, take my video. If I'm hooked up to a fish and my hands are all taken, it's really good to have that voice command to turn it on, it's awesome. So I film in 108060. I find it's the best compromise between lots of storage and really good quality for video. Both cameras, they have 128 gigabyte SD cards, so I can film for over five and a half hours on each of them. So that pretty much covers me for a full day. I've never filled them up completely, but I've got really close a couple of times. Okay, so that's pretty much everything about on board. So I'm gonna get back to the beach, we'll go through the surf landing, packing down the rods, and also loading it back onto the trailer. I'll go over what my wheels are, how I get that up the beach and everything. So that's pretty much it. I'll see you back at the beach. Okay, so we're just heading in now from our big day out. Didn't catch a whole lot, but that's all good. So I'm just gonna show you how I put all my rods down. For a start, I get all the reels off and all the rigs and everything. They just go into the pod like this. One by one, we'll get them done. Next thing, get my clip out. Okay, so. First thing we do is we get all the leashes to the right side. So my clips down here come off and they go around to this side. First two are the longest ones. So we'll go spin and this one. So those will go in. 
together. Right, now our next two will go in. It's a bit of a balancing act to get them all in at the same time. It's not too hard. That one goes in nicely there. And now we put our tie down around it. This keeps them secure. And they can't get anywhere. So we've still got movement with our rudder. That's in. Get the paddle out of the road over our leg. Okay, so that's one thing. Our next thing is to get this zipped up completely and our drift chute back in. So we'll just do that now. That just slides in there. We will zip up. So we want this all the way up in case we go over. Right, that's done. Right, let's get in. Well, that wasn't too bad. Right, so this is how I get it up the beach. I got my sea tugs here from Railblazer, and all I'm gonna do is lift the back and chuck it on. It's got quite a bit of weight in it, so let's get it up. Right, we'll straighten the wheels up, and then it goes behind my seat. And we'll just tighten her up. And away we go. Okay, so we're back at the car. And I'm gonna chuck it on the trailer. So my trailer's got this roller here. And it makes it quite easy to get the boat up. I used to have problems with uh, actually getting it up. I was hurting my back, so we lowered it. Let's get it on there. All I do is chuck it on, and then I'll swing it around so you can see what's happening. Now I go down the boat, make sure to keep it nice and tight. We'll get to the back. We'll try and lift with our legs. And on we go. Now all I need to do is pop the wheels off. They come off easy. And that's us done. Right, so that's gonna be it for our kayak setup video. I hope you'll learn something about what you could do for your setup. It's getting dark now, I better get home. Cheers, everyone.